Welcome to week 3 AMC 8 plus solution video. In this video, I will solve the first seven problems. Problem number one. What is the expression? How to simplify it? So we're going to, we are going to use the hint. So 100 squared minus 99 squared, that's the first two terms. Using the hint, we know that it is going to be 100 plus 99 times 100 minus 99. The second term is equal to 1, which is nice. The first term is 199, but I prefer not to write it as 199. I just want to write as it is. So this is equal to 100 plus 99. The third term is 98. The fourth term is 97 squared. So if we use the same method, we would have 98 plus 97 times 98 minus 97. So the answer is 98 plus 97. So if you keep doing things like that, eventually, suppose this is equal to A, then A should be equal to 100 plus 99 plus 98, plus 97, all the way down to the last term corresponding to 2 plus 1. So this is the famous problem. What is the summation of positive integers from 1 through 100? So the answer is half times 100 times 101, which is 50, 50. So the answer is C for the first problem. Problem number 2. What is the remainder of capital N divided by 7? So the, the key to solve this problem is to find the pattern of the remainders. So we'll start with the first several t seven terms. 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square, 5 square, 6 square, 7 square. Square, 7 square. When these numbers divided by 7, for the first one, the remainder is 1. The second one, remainder is 4. 3 square is 9, is 7 plus 2, so the remainder is 2. 4 square is 16, so it's 14 plus 2, the remainder is 2 again. 5 square is 21 plus 4, so the remainder is 4. 6 square is 35 plus 1, so the remainder is 1. 7 squared is divisible by 7, so the remainder is 0. So the key observation is, starting from the 8th term, starting from the next 7 terms, so the, the remainder repeats itself. So the remainder will also be 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1, 0. Okay, so let's do a quick computation. 20, 20 divided by 7, it's 2, 14, 62, 8, 5, 6, 56, 60, 8, 56. The remainder is 4. So we know that this remainder will repeat 288 times and with leftover of 4. So let's compute the summation of these remainders. 1 plus 4 is 5, it's 7, 9, 13, 14. So you add them together, you will get 14. And the 14 is divisible by 7. So this tells us the first seven terms adding together is actually divisible by 7. The next seven terms adding together is again divisible by, by 7. So the so and and so the first so this pattern repeated two hundred eighty eight times and the last four terms of the of the expression would be two thousand seventeen two thousand eighteen I mean square square two thousand nineteen and the two thousand twenty square and the remainder for this would be one four two two. And if we add if we add these remainders, we would get five, seven, we will get nine. We will get nine. And nine divided by seven has remainder two. So the final answer 
for this capital N divisible by divided by seven has remainder two. So the answer is C. Problem number three. An advanced calculus at UC Irvine has equal number of male and female students at the beginning of 2020 summer quarter. After 15 more male students and three more female students joined the class in the next two weeks, three-fifths of students in the class are now male students. What is the total number of the students now? So let's assume x is the total number number of students now so by the assumption three-fifths x are male and of course two-fifths x of them are female so this three-fifths x minus 15 was the number of male students before at the uh, at the beginning of the quarter so three fifth x minus 15 was the number of male students at the beginning of the quarter and the two fifths x minus three was the number of female students at the beginning of the quarter so by the assumption at the beginning of the quarter there are equal number of male and the female students. So then we get an equation that 3 thirds x minus 15 is equal to 2 fifths x minus 3. We then, if we move 2, two fifths x to the left hand side, we would get 1 fifths x equals 15 minus 3 is 12. So x is equal to 60. So the answer is D, 60. 60 students in the class now. Problem number four. For any number of x, bracket x represented the largest integer that is no greater than x. So solve this equation, basically. Solve this equation. Okay, how to solve this equation? So we use the property that 5x minus 0 0.9 integer part is going to be less than equal to 5x minus 0 0.9. But at the same time, it would be bigger than equal to 5x minus 0 0.9 minus 1. That follows from the definition of the, the, the bracket x. So therefore, we have the inequality since what in the middle is equal to 3x plus 0 0.7. We get 5x, so this is 1.9, is less than 3x plus 0 0.7, which is less than 5x minus 0 0.9. So we then have subtract 3x on all these three inequalities, we get 2x minus 9. 1.9 less than 0 0.7, it's less than 2.2x minus 0 0.9. So we can actually solve this inequality. So from, from the second one, from this one, we would get x is actually less than 1.3. And from that one, you would get x is bigger than 0 0.1 plus 6, 0 0.8. Okay, so x is somewhere between 0 0.8 and 1.3. But there's some constraints. It's not everywhere between these two numbers. The constraint is you have to make 3x plus 0 0.7 to be an integer because 3x plus 0 0.7 is to the left hand side, which is an integer. So let's find the range for 3x plus 0 0.7. 0 0.8 is less than x less than 1.3 so then 2.4 is less than 3x less than 3.9 if you multiple 3x on both sides and then let's add up 0 0.7 so we get 3.1 less than 3x plus 0 0.7 is less than equal to is 4.6 
And remember that this is an integer. So an integer bigger than 3.1 less than 4.6. So that means 3x plus 0 0.7 has to be equal to 4. And so therefore, x would be equal to 4 minus 0 0.7 divided by 3. That's 3.3 .3 divided by 3. It's 1.1. And if we write it as a fraction, so the only way we can do that, the simplest in, in its simplest form, then x equal to 11 over 10. So if we add the numerator and the denominator, we would get 21. So the answer is D for this problem. Problem 5. We first go over the formula that if we have n teams and each two teams play exact one game, how many total games that needs to be arranged? We know that if we have there's two teams, there are two teams, then you need one game to match them. And you have three teams, then you need three games. In general, if you have n teams and each team play exactly one time, then you need total totally half of n n minus one games. Now the assumption is each team, each team plays exactly six games against each other. So totally we would have, suppose we have n teams. So totally we would have six times one half times n, n minus one. That is equal to 396. So this is going to be, left hand side is going to be three. So we would have n, n minus one is one, three to 132 and the 132 is the multiplication of two consecutive integers so you can easily guess what the answer is because 132 is 12 times 11 so you either solve this quadratic equation or you can simply guess n is equal to 12 and the correct answer is b Problem six. So this is, a, I would say, a difficult question. The number of dots on opposite faces of a regular die added to seven. So the question is, what is the what of the following is the sum of the numbers of dots hidden between dice between the dice? So the totally we had to add three terms. The bottom of the first, so we all together we have one, two, three, four dice. And the, we have to add the bottom of the first one, of the first one, of the number one. That's easy because the top one is three, the bottom of the, the, the one is, bottom of the first one would be four. And the bottom plus top of number two, well, it's seven anyway. The bottom plus the top of number three is seven. Well, the most difficult one would be what is the top of the number four die? What is that? Okay, the key information we can find out is from the first one. So let me draw the picture of the first one. We have one here, five here, three here. So you can imagine that the one opposite to one should be six. The one opposite to five should be two and the one in the bottom should be four so that the, the opposite numbers adding together is equal to seven. Now, if, if we observe, if, if we look at this, we would see that if you use your right hand side and you, you're starting from four to, to two, then your sum is pointed to six. Okay, you have a right hand side rule so starting from four to 
two, then your thumb is pointed to six. And then you look at the bottom one, and you have four here and the two there. And you, if you use your right hand side, you would conclude that six should be at the bottom of the, the number four die. So the, the top the top of number four should be equal to one. Now, if you add four plus seven plus seven plus one, you would get 19. So the correct answer is A. Number seven. So if we have four angles of a convex, for convex quadrilateral have integer degrees and they form an arithmetic progression, and what is the maximum possible of theta? So we use the hint. So suppose the angles be A, A plus D, A plus 2D, and A plus 3D. So you have, if you add them together, because we have a quadrilateral, then 4D plus 6, which is A plus A plus D plus A plus 2D plus A plus 3D, totally we get 4A plus 6D. That's supposed to be equal to 360. And that, so that's equivalent to say that 2A plus 3D equal to, is equal to 180 degree. So now A and the D are integers. And the, so you can conclude that since 180 and the 3D are always divisible by three, so does A. So A is divisible by three. So the minimal of A is equal to three. So the minimal possible A is equal to three. And when A is equal to three, you can solve for D. D would be equal to one third of 180 minus six. So that would be equal to 58. And uh, so when you have that, so A plus three D would be equal to three plus three times 58. That's going to be equal to 177. Okay, so the correct answer is equal to 177. That's all for the first seven problems. Thank you for watching.